Okay, so this loop has some space in the beginning. It's got some space at the end. We have to uh, obviously get it tight and um, as well put it on beat. Now, what the manual suggests is that you double click, put a new warp marker, and then move it to the beginning. Or you can double click it and set one here. But it still seems that you have to delete that first marker and then uh, trim it. The way I think it's a little bit easier is this. We already have a f our first marker here. We just need to move this over to it to line it up. So again, I'm going to use that shift trick where I hold shift. And now I can move the waveform in relation to that marker and just line it right up. I don't have to create a new marker. I don't have to delete this marker. That seems at this point the easiest way. Now we also need to get this dead space out of the end. I've got a marker at the very end here that's automatically created to the far right top. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And now I need to change the tempo to match this along with changing the length. Now I know this loop's a two bar loop, so I'm going to put in two bars. And you can see that it doesn't quite fit. So obviously the sequence tempo BPM is not what this loop is. Now right now I can't access it until I click on my warp marker and then you can see that this box becomes operable and then it's just a matter of moving that up and down uh, to get it right. Obviously you need to adjust that very slightly if you hold the control key you can do smaller movements and you can have to listen to the loop to hear out loops around the end. get that just right. Now it's sounding a bit more smooth. And now of course we can go in and we can add in markers to, uh, to time this if we need to. But that's how you get rid of space in the beginning and, and this is going to be similar to how I'm going to uh, warp a full track. But the key really here for me is using the shift on the markers. Until I discovered that, I wasn't having that great of a time with it. But that really changed things because it, it seems more like the old way, but you have all of the new features as well. So let me bring up a full track. And like most tracks, you're going to have a little bit of silence in the beginning. Again, we could put a warp marker in the very beginning and then move it over to one by double clicking. And this is why you can't zoom in the waveform anymore because double clicking now creates a marker. I can move that over, but again, I either have to delete it first or I can right click it and say set one here. but then I still have to move this over and I'm going to hit, go ahead and delete that but this is the way I would do it instead of having to do all those steps again just hold shift and drag it until it's on and there you go it takes two seconds and this is as fast as it used to be in 7 and previous you know you could warp a track in you know 5-10 seconds as long as it didn't have any problems the rest of the procedure is going to be the same you have to go to the end of the track Let me go ahead and I'm going to click the first warp marker again so I can set the tempo, which I already know what the tempo is. But like most tracks, it's going to probably be slightly off at the very end, which you can see here. Again, we'll uh, make a, a new transient. Sorry, I'm going to make a new warp marker and then drag it over. Another way you can do it is, I mean, you can actually be, be a little bit sloppy here. I could make, you know, a warp marker almost anywhere I wanted to in this area. 
snap it to where I want it to be and then use the shift again to line it up. But I think it makes sense to probably get it close. Move it onto the beat and again just zoom in because you really want to fine tune this to make sure it's locked on and use the shift key and you can get the transient right on the beat. And if I listen to this it should sound on time. And it's fine. So those are the basics. That's going to get you uh, probably working a little bit quicker. Even if you just started live, it might uh, be a bit counterintuitive. But definitely check out the shift trick. I looked at the menu about three times in the warping section. I couldn't find it in reference to adjusting the waveform on it in relation to a warp marker. They only talk about it in relation to moving these pseudo markers around the, the gray ones before you actually turn them into a real marker but not after the fact. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll have some more on the other features coming up soon. Bye.